All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Dynamic Lifestyle Podcast. We have Emily Hayden in the house. Hi, everyone. We don't have, we don't obviously have you in the house. So I was just being a little bit just <laughs> drastic about it, but we have you on the show as a guest today. So how are you doing today? I'm doing awesome. Thank you guys so much for having me. You're very, very welcome. Thanks for spending some time with us and taking time out of your busy schedule. Um, Emily, we'd like to get our show started with just, you know, getting to know who our guest is and what their story is. So if you can tell us, you know, both those things, that'd be great. Okay. So uh, my name is Emily Hayden. I was born and raised in Houston, Texas. That's where I'm from. I currently live in Los Angeles, California, more specifically Venice. So growing up, my dad owned his own gym. He had his own facility and he trained his clients out of there. So at the age of like seven, I was like spotting people and screaming with him like, come on, one more rep, that kind of thing. And I was very competitive. I have four brothers and sisters originally, so there were five of us. Now there's seven of us, so six siblings total. Um, and we always were very competitive against each other. So I grew up in a very active, very uh, competitive family and just lifestyle in general, which I'm very thankful for because um, I've, always, I've always loved doing that for myself. And in high school, I was in sports, uh, starting in college. I remember I found my first actual training program on bodybuilding.com and I started following it and it was a competitor's training program and I just like I fell in love like I'd always loved lifting and there was only a few movements that I knew I knew like shoulder press bicep curl all the ab exercises in the world people always ask about that by the way they're like how are your abs so good they're my most mature muscle because I've been training them since I was like seven <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that's kind of how like I got into like fitness and all that. It was my family and then college and, and now we're here. <laughs> that's really cool. I mean, and then, you know, having so many siblings yeah. and then also too, you said, did you say that your, your parents or your father was kind of like an avid weightlifter as well too? Yeah. My dad actually was a bodybuilder back in the day. So he did bodybuilding and then from there he just did his personal training clients and now he's a holistic naturopathic pathic doctor. He does one-on-one -on -one personal training as well as life coaching, marriage counseling. He's like an all-around like just person. Like he's like a people person. Yeah. That's really yeah. amazing. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for sharing that. Yeah. So when did you know yeah. it was time to actually move to LA to explore all the opportunities that LA has to offer? And what would you say was that one most challenging part when you moved? That is a great question. So a little bit after I started competing, I got an opportunity to go out to LA and shoot with a photographer that's very known in the industry and has shot with a lot of magazines. And I had to pay for everything, my flight, the photo shoot, which was very expensive, all of that stuff. So I decided it was a really good opportunity. Nothing was like set in stone. There was nothing that was supposed to come out of it. But I saw it as, I just saw it as having potential to lead somewhere. So I went out there, I did that photo shoot. And I want to say it was not even a few weeks later, they called me and said, Oxygen Magazine wants to use you for one of their shoots. And that was my first time booking a major uh, magazine. And so I was ecstatic. So I got to go back out to L.A. I got to shoot for the magazine. And it was just the most incredible experience ever. And I realized, you know, how many opportunities were in L.A. And they literally gave me like 48 hours notice. So within 48 hours, I had to, you know, book a flight, get out there, get hair and makeup, tan, you know, all my meals ready. And it was just, it was an insane experience. From there, I booked one to two things every single month in LA. And so I was flying back and forth very frequently and getting all these awesome opportunities. And I just, I just saw what was out there. And I was at a point in my life where my business was all online and I didn't have anything really tying me down to a certain location. And so I remember bringing it up to my dad and my dad's kind of who I go to for life advice. And I remember like joking and I was like, it'd be so much easier if I just lived in California. <laughs> and he was like, why don't you like, why, why don't you just do it? And, um, I guess, I guess for him, you know, I'm kind of, I like to be realistic, but I'm also not scared to take chances and like go for opportunities like that. But I always have to kind of question myself, like, am I being, you know, brave by doing this or is this like a straight up stupid decision, you know, and he kind of reassured me it's not a stupid decision. Of course, you're taking a chance by doing that, but it might lead to something good. So my mindset with going out here was I'm going to go. I'm going to go for a year. And if I fail, I fail. I'll come back. I'll gather myself and I'll do something else. You know, I'm young 20s. Nothing's tying me down. I'm going to do it. So I just did it. 
And I have to say, doing that was one of the best, one of absolutely the best things that I've done for myself, and also one of the very hardest things I've done for myself. When I initially came out here, it's not like I moved to LA and everything fell into place and everything was great and dandy. Like, I moved out here, and now all of a sudden, you know, I was doing my business online, and that meant that I was working at home from my computer, so I wasn't making new friends or new connections. I didn't have any friends out here. A lot of people look at me today and they see the incredible friendships that I have that I'm so thankful for, but I did not move out here with those friendships. I didn't have a single friend out here. I was far away from my family that I'm super close with. I had a lot of really lonely times and times that I questioned, like, why did I even do this? I had times of, I'm not getting bookings anymore now that I live here. I'm not booking for TV or magazines and, you know, why am I even here? Um, I had those moments, but I felt inside that there was a purpose and there was a reason for why I was here. And that's kind of what helped me to keep going in those moments. And, you know, fast forward, I've been here three years now in May and it's just incredible. It's all the opportunity that's come from it, the friendships that I have now, I have a core group of friends that live here with me and, you know, I train at the Mecca of bodybuilding and it's such a surreal experience for me because things were not... Things were not always like this for me, and I don't take it lightly. So best and hardest thing that I've ever done for myself. That's a hell of a story, and we appreciate you being so honest and authentic about it because Eric and I can you know, really resonate with that. We moved out to L.A. about three months ago. We have no family out here or anything like that, so we know like when those dark times and lonely times are when you really question the big why. You know, Why am I here? What am I doing? What's my purpose? So I really appreciate that. Yeah, and I think that just to add to that, I mean, that's one of the big reasons why people don't take that leap of faith. You know, it's like... They're always going to be thinking about something, either whether it's criticism, it's fear, um, you know, self doubt, failing. So, uh, yeah, I mean, shoot, you know, hell of a hell of a journey, and kudos to you, yeah. you know, the courage that you had to just pick up and do that. So, my, I tip my hat to you. <laughs> hey, you guys too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, Emily. So let's kind of transition into uh, the, kind of like the competing, uh, the competitor nature type stuff. So okay. you you spoke about that earlier that you are a competitor. I even spoke to you one time at the gym about this that you're prepping for a show that's coming up soon. Um, mm-hmm. What is it at the end of the day that really fulfills you about competing? It's the life change that happens during every single prep. Every single prep, you know, it is on the surface level based on your physique, based on your posing based on the overall presentation that you bring to the stage. But it's about something that's so much deeper to me. So to me, every single prep, I feel like I grow tremendously as a person. I change and not even change, but I just, I evolve more into the person that I already am. And I feel like prep kind of brings that out of you. And so for me, it's very much so like a life journey and it's, it pushes you to your extremes which I think brings the most um, development in a person. I feel like if you never push yourself to that uncomfortable position, you're never going to get that growth that you get in that one spot that you can only be in when you're feeling that way. If that, I'm not sure if that makes sense. But. No, I, I think that's great. I really like how you kind of touched on that each prep you progress as a person, which yeah. is which is cool to hear. So my question is, let's say what, what what do you do to grow as a person in the off season when you're not prepping because I know when we're prepping it's easy to kind of just like really turn it on be very focused on that angle but in the off season it's very hard to sit there and be focused and, and dedicated to fitness as well so I just want to know what you do in the off season to like still grow as a person that's a really good question and something I like to point out is even without doing shows I would still continue to you know seek to grow as a person and to change um, but it all comes down to it all comes down to growing in different areas, I feel like. I feel like that allows me to grow in certain areas of my life. And then when off season comes, I start to focus on other areas of my life that I can now give more attention to. Maybe that is learning how to balance things and, and having the flexibility to even have balance. During prep, I don't even have the flexibility to be able to have balance. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So in the off season, I, I get to practice that and I get to teach other people how to do that for their own lives. So I feel like it's just kind of a mindset shift or a mindset change. Um, but the goal, regardless of the current physique goal, is to just continue to evolve into a better person. Love it. Love it. So right now, like I said, you're currently prepping. Is it for an IFBB show? Yes, it is. And when is that date? It is May 20th, the New York Pro. Wow. Right around that the is, corner. That is right around the corner. So what would it what would it mean to Emily Hayden to take that show and win it all? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
a lot. <laughs> uh, that would be insane. And my next question to follow up to that, what would it, what would happen if you did not win that show? Nothing would really change. I would have the same mindset, the same focus, the same drive, the same competitive edge to go into the next show. Um, I'd like to talk about this. You know, placing within a show is the cherry on top. It's everything else that goes into that show. I am going to be ecstatic to get on that stage and do my thing. It doesn't matter what happens at the end of the day. At the end of the day, if I were to win that show, that feeling would be overwhelming and incredible. But I'm going to be just as happy and pleased just getting on that stage and doing what I know I was meant to do. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to do it again and again and again. It's like when I was going for my pro card and I kept getting runner up to my pro card, runner up, runner up over and over. And people were like, oh, are you disappointed? And it's like, no, I'm doing what I love. And I know that it was meant for me. So I know it's going to happen regardless if it happens right now or in 10 years from now. So it's the same, that's the same mindset I have towards these pro shows. I'm so honored to even be on the pro stage. I'm aiming for first. My goal will always be first. But it doesn't matter what happens at one particular show because it's going to happen eventually. I have full faith. Love that. Well said. And it sounds like you just kind of just reframe your mindset just that way to do that. And honestly, that is what Chris and I teach our clients that do shows. I mean, it's just like there are so many aspects you can't control about a prep in, in a show. I mean, it's just it's a subjective sport. I mean, who knows what's going to happen? You know, you just have to bring your A game, enjoy the journey and just control what you can and don't and can't control and can't control at the end of the day. So well said. I love that. Yeah, and it sounds like you have like a lot of experience too with yeah. just competing. So I, I, my next question is, you know, you've been a runner up to a lot of pro cards, like you said. You <laughs> never quit. You had your eye on the prize, and then I'm assuming you had your you got your pro card, correct? Yep. Okay. Yep. And then and then you're doing your IFBB show right now. So, what would be maybe two to three really golden nuggets you can give to an aspiring bikini competitor? Yeah. So in no particular order, just the, yeah. you know some <laughs> things that come to mind are. Number one, I know a lot of people when they start a prep, they're so excited for the prep that they focus on the show. Make sure that you have a post-show plan. So I always say minimum four to six weeks of training, cardio, and nutrition from your coach. So make sure to purchase that ahead of time. Make sure you have that plan because a lot of first-time competitors, they don't really know what to do post-show. And I think that guidance is so important to the longevity of your time as an athlete, as a competitor. And even if you decide never to compete again, I think it's still very, very important to have that in place. Another thing I would say is when you're going throughout prep, don't focus on, you know, I am 10 weeks out for my show. So I have 10 weeks out. Okay, now I have 11 or 9, 8, 7. If you think like that, you're kind of always going to think that you have time. And this is something, I actually have a YouTube series called Undeniable. And in my Undeniable episode 10, I talk about I don't have 10 days. And it's because I was 10 days out from USA's my, where I actually did end up winning my pro card. And my mindset with that was I don't have 10 days to be undeniable. I have only today to be undeniable. You have no idea if you're waking up tomorrow. So why are you planning for tomorrow and the next day and the next day? Just do your best today. Check off your cardio. Check off your training. You know, check off being a good human to the people around you. Like, do everything you can today to be undeniable in every aspect of your life. And you've done it. You've already done it. And then you wake up, and tomorrow it's a choice to do it again. Wow, those are freaking powerful tips. <laughs> <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> So we're all about kind of like, you know, overcoming adversity and obstacles. What would you say is some of like, you know, what's one what's one adversity or obstacle that you're facing right now outside of prep, though? And what was the worst, you know, obstacle that you faced in your entire life? And how did you overcome that? I'll start with the second question. Um, so something that was really hard that I dealt with in my life was probably senior year of high school when my parents were married for about 20 years. They got a divorce. And um, it was a pretty nasty, pretty like worst case scenario divorce that you could probably imagine. Um, long story short, um, all my siblings went with my dad and I stayed with my mom, um, who is very mentally ill, clinically diagnosed as so. Um, but I felt very compassionate towards her. I felt very just bad, I guess. Um, and Basically, I was working multiple jobs. I was in 16 hours of school um, for college, and it was it was the hardest year of my life um, from senior year to 
you know, freshman, sophomore year of college. And um, I remember like barely sleeping. I don't even know how I did what I did with school. I was so focused. I have videos on an old computer where I would teach myself the content in college um, and I would video myself like as if I was giving myself um, a seminar. Mm -hmm to teach myself and I have videos of me at, you know at three in the morning just like this and then getting my alarm and going to work you know like I don't even know how I functioned um but I think what kept me going was just at the end of the day I just I knew that I had something so much better for my life and that that wasn't it I felt lonely I felt very hopeless um I there was a point in time where things finally ended my relationship with my mother and I and I lived out of my car and I was thankful enough to have a job where uh, they had showers, they had towel service, they, it was a very, very nice gym, basically. And um, so it wasn't that big of a deal because I would just sleep in the parking lot and then go to work. And it was a very humbling experience for me and I think it's something that has shaped me into who I am today and I wouldn't take any of that back for anything. Um, it was just a very, very low point in my life and I, I remember just feeling like a zombie. Um, that's the best way I could describe myself because I had no emotion left and I had no emotion to give anyone. And um, I just kept going day in and day out and I was like, I just, I know that there's something better for me. I know that I don't need to quit. I'm not a quitter. It's never been in me. And I know if I don't give up, I'm going to get past this and there's going to be something better for my life. And I think, you know, the people who don't really know about that, they don't realize why I appreciate everything that I have right now. Something as simple as, you know, my apartment or my car that I have now or whatever it might be, it's because I have that perspective. And, you know, I would say to anyone that's going through something that seems terrible and seems like it is hopeless, I can tell you from experience it's not hopeless. You just have to constantly make a decision to not give up. You have to constantly make a decision even if all I can do right now is get out of bed and, you know, walk across the room, then that's enough. Like, you just have to make yourself in this mindset of I'm not going to give up no matter what it is. Um, and, you know, I've come a long way since then. And I'll, I'll always keep that close to my heart just to always remind myself of where I was. Um, because I think it's very important going into everything I'm going into now just to have that perspective. It. It, it's helped me relate to a lot of people, actually. Um, the first time that I even talked about that was with my Alphalete video. Uh, we did a, a story on me, and it was just sharing my story with people. And I was blown away by the amount of support and the people that went through what I went through. And just, I couldn't believe. I couldn't believe it. So um, I'm now honored and a little bit more, <laughs> a little bit better about sharing my experience with people. Um, because I know the impact that it has. So just know that your story is shaping you into the person that you were meant to be so that you can then help others. Whew, that, that's amazing. Honestly, thanks so much for sharing that with us. Um, yeah, I, I'm a huge believer in the whole story thing. And I even like telling people like, if you have some sort of mess in your life, try to turn it into your message. Um, mm -hmm. And your story is powerful to everybody. It's going to touch somebody in some, in some way, um, somehow. So uh yeah, I mean, Chris and I struggle with this too because we lost our father when we were 18 years old and we went through so much stuff, you know, and uh, we're still trying to, you know, get over it at, at, some, uh, yeah. at some days and stuff. So it's like you have to share your story though because it's very powerful and it, it will touch and help other people out there. For sure. Yeah. So let's transition into walking us through a day in the life of Emily Hayden. So I want to know specifics, details. I don't know why I'm so fascinated <laughs> about people's lifestyles, but it's just something I'm fascinated about. So. Let me know what like the first like 60 to 1, 1, 120 minutes are in your morning routine, uh, what it looks like throughout the middle of the day, and what your wind down routine is too like uh, before bed. You know what's crazy is I'm such a person that loves routine, but with the amount that I've been traveling, it's been so different recently. Uh, but one thing that I try and do regardless if I'm traveling now, I am in prep right now. So things, you know, things change based on like the cardio that I have or the training or if I'm traveling, sometimes I'll have to move my training to the morning, that kind of thing. But things I always try to do every single day, I wake up, I have devotionals that I read every single morning that kind of like puts my mind in the right frame for the day, gives me a very good perspective on the day. Uh, and then coffee, hello, because <laughs> coffee is life. And then uh, recently I've been doing my morning cardio. I come back and then I'll usually get to 
some sort of journaling or writing notes on my computer. Maybe I'm writing out things for the day. Uh, when I'm in my routine, something that I love to do is, you're going to think I'm crazy. Some people think I'm so crazy for this. <laughs> I, I literally write out on a notepad, 7 a.m., 7.30, 8, 8.30, and I schedule out every like minute of my life. <laughs> but it's because I'm involved with so many different people, you know, so many different companies, and then all my social medias, I schedule in times that I'm going to respond, respond to comments on YouTube, time I respond to comments on Instagram. When am I going to post Instagram? When am I going to take my pre-workout meal? When I'm going to, you know, drive to the gym, walk into the gym? <laughs> like it's, it's ridiculous, but I've, it's gotten to the point where that's the only way that everything gets done. So I've had to learn how to have very good time management skills. And part of that is just starting with first, I just like write everything out. Um, and then I go back through that list and I prioritize, well, this has to be done because it has a deadline, you know, that has to get done today. And then I prioritize what time I'm going to do that. So a lot of it is just waking up devotional coffee, cardio and scheduling out my day. <laughs> right. And so what do you do kind of like to wind out? Because there's so much noise out there, you know, especially in LA, social media, all that stuff. So what do you do to kind of just wind out? You got to shut off your brain at some point. <laughs> You know, it's funny that y'all bring this up because I'm horrible at that. I'm horrible at shutting my brain off, but I've recognized recently that it's something that I just need for myself, something that I have to do. So uh, one of my friends actually inspired me to do it. She was like, just turn on Netflix, turn on Netflix, turn your phone off. And so I actually have started to do it. I'll try to set a cutoff time. And at that time, I'm no longer allowed to, you know, work on editing or this or that. Everything that's there is going to be there in the morning. And I think it's important just for mental sanity to, like, disconnect. So um, I'll, I generally make it through about 20 minutes of an episode. I'm not watching anything right now because I can't <laughs> finish it. <laughs> but um, it's good for me just to kind of, like you said, turn my brain off. Yeah, that's some wise advice right there from your friend. <laughs> oh yeah, I know, I know. It's something that's something that I'm working on yeah. with myself. Yeah, it's hard, but yeah, it, it's very important. Yeah, it's funny because I, I try to do that too. Like the last hour, hour and a half of each day is just throw on Netflix. I don't care what's on. It's just like I try to put my phone over there, but just my hand wants to just like grab it. It's just like <laughs> it's so hard. There's, it's like it's sad in yeah. a way, but it's like damn, you know, that's the society we live in. <laughs> yeah, and when you when you work for yourself, it's really hard because there's always things that can be done and there's always people that need responding to mm -hmm. and you know you you can get into a spot where you feel like you're never enough or you feel like you're never doing enough because you're never finishing everything you need to do but it just comes down to the fact to realize that you know you are a human you need to have some downtime you need to kind of rejuvenate because I've learned for myself I have had moments of time where I just push myself to the extreme all the time and I'm up all hours of the night and I'm doing everything and anything and it just wears you down. And then you're not as valuable to everyone else as you could be as if you were rested, as if you had a clear mind. And so that's what I've been trying to remind myself of is I'm more actually more valuable and more helpful if I can be my best self to someone today, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, it's just like I call that entrepreneur ADD, something like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think we all have it. Totally. Yeah. Okay, Emily. So let's say the CEO of YouTube gave you a personal phone call. And this person, whether it's a he or she, I really don't know, to be honest, but they gave you the opportunity to have a one minute message that will go viral to the entire world. We're talking about billions and bi billions and billions of views. What would your one minute message be and why? Whew. <laughs> Giving me some easy questions, right? <laughs> There's some easy ones after this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kidding. I think I would do my best to attempt to explain what I've learned about life. And have you guys ever seen those loci bracelets? I'm usually wearing mine. Where is it? Have you seen those bracelets? Uh, I think so. Okay, I wish I was wearing it. I usually have it on. Is it something like um, these? No, 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 no. Ah. It's. I bet it's right in the bathroom it's fine look it up after this but okay. you'll see it's basically a circle right and it has um little like circles and on one end there's a white circle and on one end there's a black circle complete opposite ends and the way that i see life is you're going through life you're going through the circle and you get to this white spot and the white spot represents it represents, you know, all the good things in your life, something that's amazing. Maybe it's like a high of your life. Like when you think about the best moment of your life, that's what it is. 
And in that moment, just remember to stay humble because it's not always going to be that way. You keep going through life, going through life, and then you get to the absolute lowest point in your life when you feel like it's just you're hopeless. That represents have hope. It's not always going to be that way. So you keep going. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's a constant cycle. So the whole message I'm trying to get across here is have hope stay humble, never stop going because it's going to keep going anyways. And don't be surprised by the bad things that come. Be prepared, you know, be, be there and know and have hope and faith. This is not going to last. This is making me stronger. This is evolving me into the person that I was meant to be. And if you can have that kind of mindset going in and throughout life, it's going to be not easier, but you're going to be able to understand process and get through much better. Powerful. Amazing. Powerful. Okay, so we're going to transition into what we call rapid dynamic questions. So a little bit easier questions. <laughs> you ready okay. for that? Yes. Okay. So what was what was a meaningful and powerful lesson you've learned, say, the past month? The past month. I would have to say it probably came from my dad, as most of my life lessons do. And it's that being true to yourself, like not just in the sense that people say, like, oh, be true to yourself. Like deep down in your core, who you are, who you know you are, what you're about, being true to yourself is not selfish. Um, I think that's the biggest thing that I've learned is that it's just, it's not selfish. Like that. Yeah, I agree with you. So what, mm -hmm. what, what drives you every day to get up and do what you do each day? It's the people who I meet at expos. It's the people who comment on my Instagram uh, the people who send me DMs, it's, I feel like I'm in such an amazing position to be able to have this kind of impact in anyone's life. And in my opinion, it's God working through me and speaking through me. I just get to be the messenger, which I think is just so incredible. But it's, it's all of the life changes that I see because I'm the kind of person that I can see potential in anyone and I want the best for anyone. I, I see what this person can be and if I've helped them in any way to help tap into that, I think that's incredible. So the, it's the people every single day. Like when I watch back the expo footage that I was editing, I can't even edit it without getting teary eyed. I had to cover this girl's face while I was editing because I was like at a Starbucks in a public location. I was like, I cannot handle this right now. You know, and then I finish and I would probably watch it like 25 times because it like it brings my heart joy. And there's not a lot of things that like bring my heart that much joy. All right. It's really awesome. Would you say you're an impatient or patient person? <laughs> I would say I used to be a very impatient person. And, you know, the heavens laughed at that and they were like, we're going to make you travel all the time. <laughs> and now now I've learned to be such a more patient person. I think, I think I'll always have to like work on that. Of course I would love things to happen right when I would like them to. Um, but I'm much, much better than I used to be. <laughs> like you'll catch me in an airport line, chaos going everywhere and I'm cool. Like, you know what? <laughs> it is what it is. Just cause I've done it so many times. If you need to practice patience, go travel for three months and come back. <laughs> I love that. Okay. So, uh, next question is, uh, what do you, what do you dislike most about the fitness industry? Ooh, this is a good one. <laughs> oh man, how do I choose? No, I'm and, kidding. And be honest. <laughs> yeah, be honest. Um, I would say at the top of my list, um, there are a few things to be honest, but at the very top of my list is I do not like how the fitness industry has been sexualized. I think um, there's a difference in being a confident woman in her body um, who's classy about it, and I think there's a difference in just overly sexualizing everything to where it has nothing to do with fitness. That's not what fitness is about. That's not fitness to me. Um, and yeah, that's something that really bothers me because I feel like people that are coming into the industry, they think that that's what they need to do or they think that that's what it's about. Or people who aren't in the industry at all and they just look at it, they're like, oh, that's what the fitness industry is. And that's not it at all. I The fitness industry should be about you know people individually and helping them with their fitness. But we all know here that helping them with their fitness just transforms their life. It should be about life change. And I, I want to help be a part of that change in the industry and shift it from that to focusing on life change. So can you give me a quick example though of like what you're referring to exactly? 
Uh, yeah. So for example, it could be girls doing a photo shoot in the gym with, you know, boobs hanging out, wearing absolutely nothing, like sitting there with a finger in their mouth, like <laughs> makes no sense at all. Like no sense at all. And just that, you know, they're hashtagging fitness on that and representing the fitness industry in that way. I think it's just very repulsive. <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually glad you touched on uh, touched on that because I mean these days it's like you got their mindset is like we need to stand out some way somehow, right? So that first thing that comes to mind is like oh sex sells, so we got to go do something like that, and then they're gonna just sit there and be like oh that's part of the fitness industry. So I'm glad you touched on that because that is kind of bullshit, you know? Absolutely, I totally agree. Yeah. It's and it's something that I think can be changed with the right leaders doing their part to change it. Right. And um. I've been connected with a lot of really awesome women recently in the past, you know, six months, year or so. And um, I'm happy to say that I really do think there is a change happening here. So that's awesome. What are you currently missing right now in your life? This could be anything. Ooh, <laughs> that's a deep missing? one. That is, that is a deep one. Um, I'm still searching for what makes me happy as a person. I, I know what makes me happy and that's helping people. But I think that there's also like a more personal side to that. And uh, I think I'm still tapping into that. Yeah, I, I love that. I mean, it, are you a Leo or? Uh, no, I'm a Gemini. Okay. Yeah. It's just, um, I'm dealing with the same thing right now too, just finding the happiness and stuff like that. So it's just, it, it really resonates with fulfillment and everything like that. So yeah. Okay. So what is something that, people don't know about you that if you told them right now they'd be surprised about oh gosh I'm like what have I not told YouTube <laughs> <laughs> um, that's difficult uh, I think most people probably don't know this is super random but I bit my tongue in half when I was younger Ooh, shit. like like it was barely hanging on by a thread I had to hold my tongue in my mouth <laughs> like on the way to the ER and then they use this like medical glue and it just like glued back together. And I don't have a scar, everyone always asks. How did I you, wish I did almost. How did you do that? Um, I was jumping on a trampoline with like 30 other kids and I got Ooh. double bounced and came down and just like straight up bit it in half. Oh shit. Wow, that's painful. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if that's what you were looking for, but there you go. <laughs> hey, it works. That's interesting. I've never heard that. So, yeah. So the next question What do you want to let go of the most in 2017? other people's opinions. I want to let go of t taking that into consideration. I want to, um, you know, and it's something that I talk about and say, like, you know, don't worry about what other people think, um, but it's something that I'm so strongly working on for myself. You know, being a social media influencer, it's not just our peers, but it's hundreds of thousands of other people that now are putting their opinion on your life and making judgment calls and making assumptions and you know it's very difficult as a social media influencer to to be able to do that and say I just don't care what they think and make decisions that way um, so that's what I want to let go most of in my life and especially in 2017 is just coming to terms with being true to who I am and as a person being confident in that and not letting anyone else's opinion um, you know get in the way gotcha so Chris and I recently wrote a book uh, titled The New Era of Fitness. Um, do you feel like we're in a new era of fitness or we're kind of like the, the fitness industry is kind of, um, you know, evolving towards that? I, I don't feel like we're there yet, but I feel like we're on an upward slope. Gotcha. What do y'all feel? I think so too. Uh, I, I mean, I think there's, man, if there was like a black and white answer, that'd be great. But I think there's so much gray area with everything that... Yeah, I mean, there's so much misleading information out there. There's so much great information out there. It's just uh, how do you reach the masses with all that stuff, you know, and really just kind of change people's belief systems and persuade them. So uh, I think we're, we're kind of getting there, but it's going to take time. <laughs> I think it takes the right people with the influence to do it. Right. Um, but with that said, I think every single person who believes that and wants to be a part of it can be. They can start with the people that work at the same, you know, business place that they work at. It doesn't matter if it's five people in your circle or if it's a hundred thousand on social media. You're gonna greatly impact whoever you're directly connected to. So I want everyone, you guys and everyone listening, like just remember you are the influence in your life, no matter who that is. Absolutely. Love that. 
So before we ask the last question, I want to acknowledge you, and this is coming from the older brother by one minute. And <laughs> <laughs> so I want to acknowledge you first for your inspiration, for inspiring the world. Secondly, I want to acknowledge you for your courage, right, for coming on our show and having the courage to tell your story, be authentic. And the last thing I want to acknowledge you on is your resiliency, okay? So your story is incredible. You're a fighter, and it's, it, it's something that needs to be out there and inspire others. So I just want to commend you for all of that. Wow, thank you so much. You're very welcome. So this dude took all my words. <laughs> <laughs> so the last question, what does it mean to Emily Hayden to live a dynamic lifestyle? To me, I think it just means learning to have everything working in sync, right? So you have all these different aspects of your life that, that make up life. And I think it's learning how to make all of those go together and go around. Gotcha. Love, Love it. it. Love Everyone's it. got their own definition of it. Absolutely. <laughs> so, where, cool. so where can our listeners find you and your work? Sure. So my Instagram is my first and last name, Emily Hayden Fitness. So Emily Hayden Fitness, and then Twitter, it's EH Fitness 21. The EH stands for Emily Hayden. So EH Fitness 21. My website is www.emilyhaydenfitness.com, and that's kind of my home base. I have you know, all my contacts, my programs, everything that you could want to know is on there. Awesome. So we'll have all of that you know, plugged into the show notes. Emily, thank you so much again for coming on our show and just you know, sharing your wisdom and everything. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem at all. I'm honored to be here, and I think you guys are great, so I'm glad that we're able to get to know each other. You know a lot about me now, but <laughs> hopefully I'll get to know you guys a little better as well. Absolutely. At the gym and stuff. Yeah, we definitely look forward to connecting. But thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk soon. Sounds good. Thanks, okay, guys. Bye. Thanks, guys, for tuning in to our video. We really, really appreciate it. And before you guys go, make sure to subscribe below to our newsletter so you guys can get our free and new book, The Four Pillars of Becoming Dynamic Within Fitness.